A few months ago, RSD sent me their Sargent to review. It's a bike they call the Swiss Army Knife, since it's designed to be everything from a 140mm shredder to a rigid bike pack rig with fat tires. I've had my eye on it for a couple of years, and in this video I'm going to talk about if it lived up to my expectations or not. Let's start off by talking about the geometry of this bike, since that's what really gives a bike its character. The V5 is new this year, with the main difference being a shorter chainstay while still being able to run up to a 4 inch tire. On paper, the Sargent looks to be the typical modern aggressive hardtail. A 140mm fork, 65.5 degree head tube angle, low standover, long reach, tallish stack, you see where I'm going. It's only once you get to the bottom bracket and chainstay do you really notice something else is going on. The bottom bracket drop, or how far below the axles the bottom bracket is, can make a big difference in how the bike feels. More drop tends to feel more stable and more in the bike, while less drop feels more maneuverable. The Sargent has a 45mm drop, which isn't a ton, especially for an aggressive hardtail, but since the bike is built to run everything from 27.5 plus all the way up to 29 plus, it was smart of them to keep it on the higher side. Otherwise, as soon as you threw that smaller wheel set on, you'd probably be having pedal strikes every single ride. On the chainstay front, I mentioned it's been shortened from the previous version, but it's still 430 millimeters in its shortest position, which really isn't all that short. Shorter chainstays make a bike feel more playful, since it's easier to move the back end around and get the front end up, say when you want to manual. Those shorter stays also make it near impossible to fit both wide and tall tires though, so the whole Swiss Army knife thing would have had to go out the window. For the style of riding I enjoy, I don't find myself wishing for anything much shorter than 430, so while some may see this as a problem, I have zero issues with it. I'd much rather have the ability to run a 4 inch fat tire if I really wanted to or go full on 29 plus than have extra short chain stays. Now let's jump into the things I like about this bike. The first one is, of course, that I love the versatility. I only used it as a 29er and a 29 plus, but there was plenty of clearance for more rubber in there. I appreciate a bike that can do more than just one thing, so kudos to RSD for building a bike like this. Another thing I liked, which I mentioned in my first ride video, is that although this thing has a 140mm fork, it doesn't really ride like it. On flatter terrain, it rides like a shorter travel, less aggressive bike. It doesn't wander or flop around, it goes just right where you point it. As soon as you hit a steep or technical downhill though, you're reminded that it's got the travel and geometry you need for the drops and whatever is ahead. Going along with both of these points, one of my favorite things about the bike is that the geometry wasn't taken all the way to the extreme. 74 degree seat tube angle is considered pretty slack these days, especially when paired with such a slack head tube. Seems like most bikes in this category would probably have a 75, even up to a 76 degree seat tube. I think it's a pretty smart middle ground though, because if you did run RSD's rigid fork, or even just wanted to throw a 120 fork on there, the geometry still works. According to their own chart, the bike's angle steepens up about 1.5 degrees with the rigid fork. So if the seat tube had been more upright, like say 76 degrees to begin with, you'd end up at nearly a 78 degree seat tube angle, which is just way too steep for that application. By not going so far to the one extreme or the other, the bike maintains its versatility. I also happen to think it makes the bike feel really comfortable and almost familiar, but maybe that's just me. Now onto the things that I didn't love. One obvious one is the Super Boost axle standard, because while it does allow for wider tire clearance with shorter stays, it's just not very common. If you're someone who likes to swap wheel sets with other bikes or even likes to upgrade, it might even be a deal breaker for you. Your other bikes are probably boost, so the rear wheel of those will be useless to you for swapping, and then when you do want to go out and find a fresh set of wheels, there are a lot fewer options available. For me, it's not the end of the world, but maybe that's just because I'm so used to it being on the fringes of the bike market already with my fat bikes. To be honest, that's about my only complaint with the bike. It doesn't have the highest end components out there, but it's still a reliable and solid build at a comparatively low price point. So if you want to upgrade later, it's not all that painful. 
When all was said and done, I have to admit it was painful to pack this bike up to ship back to RSD. I've ridden a lot of bikes in my days and every so often one of them just kind of speaks to you. When you get on it, it just clicks and when you go to those trails you ride all the time, it's just a perfect fit. In my case, that's exactly what the Sargent V5 was. It's a true quiver killer of a bike that's adaptable enough to be fun on drops and jumps, a solid bike packing platform, or a fat bike for groomed snow in the winter. So although I'm sending this one back, I have a feeling I'm going to end up buying one in the very near future. If this bike is also speaking to you and you're interested in getting it, or I guess any other RSD bike for that matter, use the code down in the video description for 5% off your purchase. And that's all I've got for you. Thanks again for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this review. And if you're on the fence about buying this bike, hopefully this review kind of helps you decide what you want to do. If you want to see more videos like this, reviews, rides, anything like that, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.